Consider the following reaction of potassium permanganate with hydrochloric acid. Potassium permanganate plus hydrochloric acid yields manganese 2 chloride plus chlorine gas plus potassium chloride and water. When the chemical equation is balanced, what is the ratio of the coefficients of manganese 2 chloride and chlorine gas? Is it A, 1 to 2, B, 2 to 3, C, 2 to 4, D, 1 to 5, or E, 2 to 5? One thing you will quickly realize if you try to balance this equation by inspection is that it is not easy to do. When this happens, check if the reaction is a redox reaction. If it is, in fact, a redox reaction, there's a couple of extra steps you need to do to facilitate the process of balancing the equation. The first is to identify the oxidation and reduction half reactions by assigning oxidation numbers to all the elements involved in the reaction. By now, you should know how to do this. In this particular case, you should be able to identify that the oxidation number of manganese changes from plus 7 in potassium permanganate to plus 2 in manganese 2 chloride. From plus 7 to plus 2 involves a decrease of 5. This means that manganese is reduced, and every time a manganese chloride is formed, 5 electrons are gained by the manganese atom. Similarly, chlorine has an oxidation number of minus 1 in hydrochloric acid. In diatomic chlorine molecule on the product side, chlorine has an oxidation number of 0. In other words, the oxidation number of chlorine atom increased by 1. But there are two chlorine atoms and one Cl2 molecule, so we're looking at a total increase of 2 for every Cl2 that is formed. This means that chlorine is oxidized, and every time a diatomic chlorine molecule is formed, two electrons are lost. Remember that oxidation involves an increase in oxidation number, which means a loss of electrons. Now, in a redox reaction, any electrons lost must be gained. In other words, the product ratio must be such that the total number of electrons gained is equal to the total number of electrons lost. Let's examine the implications of the ratios given in the answer choices. Choice A says that the product ratio is 1 to 2. If one manganese 2 chloride is formed, that means a gain of 5 electrons. If two chlorine molecules are also formed, that means a loss of 4 electrons. 2 electrons for each Cl2 molecule times 2 Cl2 molecules. 5 electrons gained and 4 electrons lost. Choice A can't be right. Here, electrons lost is not equal to electrons gained. How about choice B? which says that the product ratio is 2 to 3. Formation of 2 manganese 2 chlorides means 10 electrons gained. 2 times 5 equals 10. 3 Cl2 molecules formed means 6 electrons lost. 3 times 2 equals 6. It's 2 electrons for every chlorine molecule, so 2 times 2, or 4 electrons lost. Here again, we have electrons lost not equal to electrons gained. So choice B is wrong. How about choice C? A 2 to 4 ratio is the same as a 1 to 2 ratio. In fact, if you had no idea how to work out this problem, you should at least be able to eliminate choices A and C right away. The ratios are the same. Since there's only one correct answer, both choices must be wrong. Let's look at choice D. 1 manganese 2 chloride formed times 5 electrons gained for every manganese 2 chloride equals 5 electrons gained. 5 Cl2 molecules formed times 2 electrons lost for every Cl2 equals 10 electrons lost. Again, the number of electrons lost does not equal the number of electrons gained. Choice D is the wrong answer. Therefore, choice E must be the correct answer. 
2 manganese 2 chloride formed times 5 electrons gained for every manganese 2 chloride equals 10 electrons gained. 5 Cl2 molecules formed times 2 electrons lost for every Cl2 equals 10 electrons lost. Electrons lost equals electrons gained, which is what we want. Therefore, the coefficients of manganese 2 chloride and Cl2 must be in a, a 2 to 5 ratio. Two manganese 2 chlorides are produced for every five Cl2s produced. We can say that every time the reduction half reaction happens twice, the oxidation half reaction must happen five times. In the process, 10 electrons are transferred. Now that we have established the ratio of manganese 2 chloride and Cl2, we can easily balance the equation by inspection. We have established that the ratio of manganese 2 chloride to Cl2 is 2 to 5. So if we put a coefficient of 2 for manganese 2 chloride, we must put a coefficient of 5 for Cl2. Note that we don't have to use 2 and 5. We can use any multiple of 2 and 5. We can multiply both by 2 and use 4 and 10, or we can multiply both by 3 and use 6 and 15. Let's see what else we need to do if we use 2 and 5. We can see that a coefficient of 2 for potassium permanganate on the left allows us to balance manganese. We try to balance manganese before chlorine because manganese only appears once on either side of the equation. We can also see that potassium appears only once on either side of the equation. It is obvious that the coefficients of potassium permanganate and potassium chloride should be the same in order for potassium to be balanced. At this point, since we have a coefficient of 2 for potassium permanganate, we should set the coefficient of potassium chloride as 2. So far, we have, a, we have balanced manganese and potassium. Let's look at hydrogen and oxygen next since both appear only once on either side of the equation. Obviously, the hydrochloric acid to water ratio must be 2 to 1. In other words, the coefficient of hydrochloric acid must be twice of that of water in order for hydrogen to be balanced. How about oxygen? There are 8 oxygens on the left side. 2 times 4 equals 8. The only way to have 8 oxygens on the right is to put a coefficient of 8 for water. In our attempt to balance oxygen, we have affected hydrogen. We now have 16 hydrogens on the right and only 2 on the left. This is easy to fix. Remember that the hydrochloric acid to water ratio should be 2 to 1. If the coefficient of water is 8, then the coefficient of hydrochloric acid should be 16. We simply change the coefficient of hydrochloric acid to 16. On to chlorine. We try to balance this last since it appears in three different places on the right. We can verify that at this point chlorine is already balanced. We can see that we have 16 chlorines on the right, 4 in manganese chloride, 2 times 2 equals 4, plus 10 in the diatomic chlorine gas. 5 times 2 equals 10, and 2 in potassium chloride. 4 plus 10 plus 2 equals 16. Therefore, we need 16 chlorines on the left. We already have 16 chlorines on the left. If you're having trouble deciding which elements to balance first, you might find the algebraic alternative easier. Here's how we do it. Let W be the coefficient of potassium permanganate. Let X be the coefficient of hydrochloric acid. Let Y be the coefficient of potassium chloride. And let Z be the coefficient of water. Now to balance the potassium, W must be equal to Y. 
Let's call this equation 1. The number of potassium atoms on the left is W. The number of potassium atoms on the right is Y. To balance manganese, W must be equal to 2. Let's call this equation 2. The number of manganese atoms on the left is W. And the number of manganese atoms on the right is 2. To balance oxygen, 4W must be equal to Z. Let's call this equation 3. The number of oxygen atoms on the left is 4W. The number of oxygen atoms on the right is Z. To balance hydrogen, X must be equal to 2Z. Let's call this equation 4. The number of hydrogen atoms on the left is X. The number of hydrogen atoms on the right is 2Z. Finally, to balance chlorine, X must be equal to 4 plus 10 plus Y. The number of chlorine atoms on the left is X. The number of chlorine atoms on the right is 2 times 2, or 4, from manganese 2 chloride, plus 5 times 2, or 10, from Cl2, plus Y from potassium chloride. Let's examine these equations closely. We can see right away that the first element we can balance is manganese. Equation 2 says that W is equal to 2. By setting W equal to 2, we are balancing manganese. We can then see that potassium and oxygen can be balanced in any order, since plugging in the value of W for either equation 1 or equation 3 allows us to determine the remaining variable. For example, equation 1 says to balance potassium, we must set Y equal to W, but we already know that W is equal to 2. Therefore, Y must be equal to 2. How about oxygen? Equation 3 says that 4W must be equal to Z. Since we already have established that W is equal to 2, we can say that 4 times 2 is equal to Z, or Z is equal to 8. The only remaining unknown, X, can be obtained using either equation 4 or equation 5. That is, by balancing either hydrogen or chlorine. Equation 4 says that x is equal to 2z, but we have established that z is equal to 8. Therefore, x is equal to 2 times z, or 2 times 8, which means that x is equal to 16. Note that we determined z by balancing oxygen. In other words, we can balance hydrogen after we have balanced oxygen. Alternatively, we can use equation 5 which says that x equals 4 plus 10 plus y. Since we have already established that y is equal to 2, we can say that x is equal to 14 plus y, or 14 plus 2, which is equal to 16. Note that we have determined y by balancing potassium. In other words, we can balance chlorine after we have balanced potassium. Here's a summary of the sequence we can follow for balancing after we have established the coefficient ratio of the reduction and oxidation products. First, we balance manganese by setting the coefficient of potassium permanganate to 2. Once we have balanced manganese, we can balance potassium by setting the coefficient of potassium chloride to 2 and we can also balance oxygen by setting the coefficient of water to 8. Once we have balanced potassium, we can balance chlorine and hydrogen by setting the coefficient of hydrochloric acid to 16.